and uh, welcome to the Astro Slide first look back as Q&A part two. We uh, asked you for questions as backers of the Astro Slide in the last few days, and we've been inundated with your questions. And I'm delighted that today we have uh, both Dr. Yanko Mersic Flegel, the CEO of uh, Planet Computers, and David A. Greedy, the CTO of uh, Planet Computers, with us to answer those questions specifically. So thank you, gentlemen, for taking the time today. And uh, without further ado, we'll crack on with the questions. So unsurprisingly, perhaps the first set of questions are related to the uh, processor, and they include uh, Flash Corliss, uh, Dirk Mansk, Roman, Paul Phillips, Mike, uh, backer number 3064. They're all asking about the uh, processor, they're all asking processor related questions. Uh, which are around, you know, the unavailability of the MediaTek 1000, Dimensity 1000, whether you instead considered swapping to Snapdragon, whether you considered swapping to Dimensity 820. Um, Yanko, I know that you've covered this in some detail on our first Q&A, but can you just touch on some of those points now? Yeah, so there's maybe a couple of points here that we haven't covered in the first look um, event. Um, so um, I think on the uh, whether we can go to uh, Snapdragon or Exynos, there's some some questions on that. Essentially, uh, no, we cannot because our ODM that has that we work with on the Gemini and on the Cosmo uh, and now on the Astro is exclusively on MediaTek. So essentially, we would have to change everything, and that would introduce uh, too much risk. So we have obviously um, considered this during the process as well, given uh, that we had to opt for the 800 as our only choice. Uh, the next question was, did we consider the, um, the Dimensity 820? Yes, we did. And uh, there was also unavailability on that um, as well. Okay, thank you. Um, I think Mike Fuller's asked an interesting question as well, which is what's the difference in terms of the specification of the Dimensity 1000 with uh, 6 gig of RAM and the Dimensity 800 with the additional uh, 2 gig of RAM making 8 gig. Can you, can you touch on that as well for Mike? Well, I mean, uh, in the... Uh, in the uh... In the uh, specification update, we've updated which points we've upgraded uh, in in uh, you know, on on the on the backer update in green, and which points we we think are sort of downgrades in uh, in in kind of orange, right? So that's in the backer update. I'll go into a few details. Uh, so what we get. Uh, so with the with the one thousand and sixty, obviously you have six gigs of RAM. Uh, we've upgraded the RAM by two gigs, uh, which is a significant cost. Uh, but also, you know, the, the the 800 dimensity has this power safe mode, which uh, which the dimensity 1000 doesn't. Just remember that the dimensity 800 was actually introduced to the market after the 1000, not before. So it's not like 800 was an earlier chip. It's actually a later chip. Um, so, I mean, our, our pluses, our bigger pluses are that we've got a, an AMOLED display. Uh, another plus is that we've got an extra two gig of RAM and getting to eight gigs of RAM, that we've got a Sony sensor for the camera, which we just specified as a sensor. Our last sensor was Samsung, which is uh, a different quality. I think the Sony is a better quality. Um, we've also upped the, um, um, the front camera from five megapixel to 30 megapixel. So there's a few uh, ch changes which are positive. Really the main negative um, uh, thing in the specification is the processor. And you, I think I've given a full explanation of that we cannot have the processor that we were indicated we were going to have, so. Okay, thank you for that. I'd, I'd also like to thank uh, Ivan R, uh, JB3924, Mr. Czar, uh, Dom Rodriguez, and Don Prince, all of whom asked similar questions around, um, you know, whether the, the 
whether the processor was available, whether a move to Qualcomm was an option, why uh, the MediaTek, which I think you've addressed, but I'd, I just wanted to thank those uh, backers for their questions as well. So we've had some questions about Bluetooth as well. Uh, Christian um, was asking in terms of BLE audio, particularly related to uh, hearing aids. Uh, JB3924 was asking about the lack of uh, BLE audio and uh, Danny Barra was asking about BLE as well. So could you just uh, clear that up as well, please? So uh, the, 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 the Bluetooth that is supported is uh, Bluetooth 5.1. Um, we, uh, we don't have BLE audio. However, I do believe that we have most of the BLE in there. Uh, however, not the BLE audio part. So um, that's the situation with the chipset. Um, there's nothing much we can do about that. Um, also on the uh, Wi-Fi, we are um, uh, down to the, the Wi-Fi 5. So Wi-Fi 5, 2, T2 are not Wi-Fi 6. However, there are not a lot of Wi-Fi 6 devices yet out on the market. Okay, thank you very much. Um... Moving on to questions about the hardware itself. Uh, we've got a question here from Chris Adair, which is, will the uh, Astro Slide 5G charge quickly on USB-C? So can you uh, just um, relate uh, your, your opinions on that, please? David, do you want to go on that? Uh, yes, I guess. Um, so yes. Uh, uh, Planet devices, so starting from the Gemini and the Cosmo, they had um, they always have been compatible with the MediaTek uh, Pump Express uh, standard, and that will provide uh, fast USB-C charging. Thank you. And um, also on the hardware, there's a question around HDMI. Uh, Avash has asked um, why is HDMI not being supported while, when uh, DisplayPort is? So, so actually uh, the DisplayPort is actually converted into the HDMI. So actually you will be able to use HDMI with the HDMI adapter out of the unit. So it will be HDMI um, out female with a, with a, um, um, with a, with a adapter from USB-C. Great, just that's, like, that's just like on the Cosmo, just like on the Gemini. Fantastic, that's reassuring for Abash. Um, NCM asks about the camera quality in terms of uh, you know the within the Cosmo, the media tech stack did not give um, did not support the full capabilities of the sensor. Uh, that I know is something that's been improved over time. Uh, is there likely to be uh, is that likely to be a problem with Astro Slide, or is that something that we think we've resolved? So we think there'll be a huge improvement in the camera. Uh, one, because uh, the, uh, the sensor is a Sony sensor. It's a high quality, you know, tier one sensor. And uh, uh, the pre it's 48 megapixel and high quality with uh, um, standard orient. So basically a, a, um, a, a square type orientation, um, um, a square type organization of the CMOS, whereas the, uh, the CMOS sensor, whereas the uh, the previous sensor was a 24 uh, megapixel sensor from Samsung, which has a hexagonal organization of CMOS. So basically, it's, it's far the, the, the new sensor, not just that it has a larger resolution, but it's uh, uh, the, the organization of the, the CMOS sensor is actually better. So you'll get a, a far superior performance. Good to hear, thank you. And I'd also like to thank Felagund and Colin W, two other backers that asked the same question around the camera. Um, moving on to um, another hardware question. Colin W asks, uh, when you were producing the Cosmo, did you have to introduce any hardware modifications partway through production? And uh, he also asks if you're expecting to see the same for Astro Slide. Well, you know, uh, as you know, uh, every production run, there might be some differences in the hardware. Um, however, um, you know, we've had, uh, you know, in terms of the processor, uh, you know, with every phone up to now, we've had some changes. So, you know, with the, with the Gemini, we had uh, initially X25, then we went to X27. Um, again, there were some differences there. 
um, uh, in um, in um, the Cosmo, we were initially led to believe we were going to get something called P80, which never really existed. And then we went to a P70 uh, for the processor. So it's very interesting. It seems to be happening always, but we managed to get the devices out. Um, in terms of smaller components, yes, there's, there's always changes, but typically not within a single production run. So we expect what we stick with now will be available to all the backers in this period. Thank you. Uh, here's a question from Bill Dengler, and it's around stereo microphones. Uh, does the Astro Slide uh, support and have stereo microphones? If not, could they be added? So uh, we have stereo speakers on the <laughs> on the on the unit, uh, but uh, we don't have stereo microphones on the device itself. I'm not sure if there's a USB-C peripheral with stereo mic, but I'm pretty sure that there probably is something. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the next set of questions are around um, the battery. Um, and I would like to thank a whole pile of people who've asked questions here, namely Joshua Smith, Matty, Darren Friedman, Dennis Freshwater, Stefan Unger, uh, who's asked two questions, Ivan Fasciani, uh, Patrick Robb, Jeff Shaw. They're all asking about the, uh, the battery size. Um, obviously, uh, I think the most pertinent question to start with is from Stefan, and, and he says, will the battery be sufficient at 3,500 milliamp hours to uh, last all day from, say, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m.? So, so just on, on that one, uh, I think uh, we made uh, uh, quite a long uh, explanation of the battery decisions in the first look video. There's also now a poll um that will give the option for a 4000 million power battery however uh having said that i do believe that the three and a half thousand uh million power capacity will be sufficient for that time frame maybe even longer i've got some um dimensity 800 devices um that we are testing and uh from from other manufacturers and we think it will be sufficient um, however, uh, you know, this is now going to be open to a poll. Uh, so uh, please participate in the poll and let us know your thoughts. Um, there are trade offs in terms of um, the device. So please be aware of that. But, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's there and uh, we feel that um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of feedback on this issue. So we've opened that up to a poll. Um, and um, I, th I think uh, I think from the, the, the at least the, the vocal uh, backers uh, that the preference will be for a larger battery. Um, as I said, uh, I think it might be sufficient because the Dimensity 800 does have this special, very efficient power safe mode uh, on 5G um, that has been introduced only in the 800, so that's not in the 1000. And, and that actually answers directly a question from Mike Fuller, where he said, do you expect any improvements in battery life from the new chipset? And you've been very clear that there is an improvement in terms of battery saving on the 800. Yes. Okay, super. Thank you. And I'd also like to thank Alexandra Dons, uh, Stefan Laloy, Dominique Van Bell, and also Christian uh, for their questions, which were also very similar in terms of the battery size. There's one more question on the battery, which I would just like to um, like to raise with you, if I may. It's from Hirofumi Takamine, and he says, will the battery be replaceable? Uh, it is um, replaceable by a trained technician so you can basically remove the cover and replace the battery but it's not removable as in user removable um, which would increase the thickness of the battery to quite a large shape so typically batteries are not user removable anymore because of the device um, implications they need to have additional protective um, layers which increase the thickness yet more so it will, it will be a serviceable option correct Thank you. 
I'd like to move on to the question of accessories uh, because we've had a few questions here and I'd like to start with uh, Stanislav, Stanislav uh, Filipov who has asked about uh, a protective case, um, particularly a flip case. Uh, are we planning, is Planet planning to produce one? So yes, we'll be making announcements about peripherals, uh, a case and um, also um, a protective projector for the screen. Um, and some other peripherals uh, in due course. Super. And I'd also like to thank uh, Dean Relkin and um, Contribution ID 465 for their questions, which were also on the, the question of protective cases for Astro Slide. Um, then the next question comes from Peter Lowe, who says what he really cares about is having um, stylus input. Is that possible? Um, will there be stylus input? similar to he mentions the Samsung Note and the Surface Duo. So, so there, there will not be an integrated stylus and uh, the best we can do with the stylus is really to put something that's integrated with into the case. Um, again, the technology uh, with our screen factor and everything else, you will, you will be able to use a, a standard stylus, uh, but that the stylus would have to be, it's not integrated into the device. So not a specialized stylus that's integrated into the device at this point. Okay, thank you. And uh, that also answers the question of John Barry Lancaster. And interestingly, Ian Thomas made exactly that point, which is his uh, use of the Cosmo has been transformed with the use of uh, our case or the, the Planet case. This allows me to keep a stylus with it. So it sounds like uh, that might be an option that he might want to take up in the future. So thank you, Ian, for your question as well. Um, so the next group of questions are around the design and physical appearance of uh, the Astro slide. Um, and uh, the first one is from Morris Pinner, and it's will there be a physical alarm cancel or a snooze button that can be operated without sliding out the keyboard? So, so firstly, you know, because we have the, um, the big screen now on the device, you can probably just clear the alarm by doing a swipe. Uh, secondly, you know, there is this... Um, smart button on the side and we'll look into providing an option to um to actually cancel an ongoing alarm with the press of the smart button thank you um michael uh, doris asks is the opening me mechanism spring loaded and if not can it be to make it easier to open hi michael i know you're a vocal um uh, backer on our on our site and on email um uh, yes, the mechanism is spring-loaded. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> nice, straightforward answer there. And Thomas uh, Brayler uh, asks, what is the locking me mechanism for the rock-up hinge when the device is open to, to prevent the display from wobbling or tilting? Is there magnets in there? Or perhaps, uh, Yanka, I know on the first uh, video you showed this, but perhaps you could show it again so that people can see that it's nice and uh, solid on there. Actually, it's, it's the opposite. There, there are magnets involved to, um, to lock the device when it's closed. Okay? Yeah. So when it's closed, right, then, then the magnets keep it locked in that position. But actually, because it's spring-loaded it's spring in this position, right, then basically this is very sturdy. Okay, so this is very uh, sturdy because it's actually, there's pressure. There are some locking points on the actual surface joints here that allow it to be, it's, it's very, very sturdy in that position. So you don't need to worry about that. The, the, actual, uh, the, the actual magnetic uh, lock is actually the other way. It's actually locking it in place when it's closed so it doesn't wobble when it's closed. Yeah. So uh, yes, in both, in both of those positions, it should be very sturdy and, and, and stable. Lovely. And, and I'd like to give a quick shout out to Peter Lowe also, who asked about uh, whether there was a um, sort of spring mechanism in place, which has now been answered. But Peter, thank you also for your question and for your backing for the project. Just to interject on that. So the, the, the spring mechanism is pushing the device you know, backwards. So the two sides together like this. So that it's actually locking it in place. It's not a spring mechanism that pushes it upwards. It's pushing it inwards, right? Okay, lovely. Um, and Roman asks, will it be possible to, uh, and you may may not have tried this yet, 
but will it be possible to slide out Astro keyboard with just one hand? I I, uh, I, I think it might be on the final model, but we'll have to see. Um, uh, I think I think the advice would be to do it with two hands. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm sure that some people will manage it with one hand, one of them being myself. Okay, lovely. Veronica Matthews asks, what about different colors for the Astro slide? Um, she would particularly like either a cobalt uh, blue or a pink. I'm guessing that um, that could be something of a challenge, but could you address that, please? Yeah, so thank you for that question, Veronica. So we're looking at potentially a blue version um, or something uh, in order of that. I'm not sure that um, we will be looking at a pink version, but I think we'll, we'll be looking at a blue version. Um, so. The final CMF still yet to be completely decided, but we want something to, to mark a little bit of a departure from a normal phone. So I've been discussing with Martin uh, Redford, our designer, about that, those color schemes as well. Um, at the moment, we are a kind of all black slash metallic space gray on some of the, um, some of the uh, uh, sides, especially around the rim of the keyboard. The, the model that you see, the, the sample that you see, is um has a black edge but that that might actually change until the final design thank you uh rouse asks why not have communication from the keyboard uh, to the screen through nfc instead of cables um he f feels or he or she feels that could eliminate a lot of technical physical issues but i'm guessing it will cut it would come with its own challenges yeah, so, so this is it's not just the keyboard that's in the base it's also the battery uh, it's also yeah. the USB C's. It's also the headset. Um, uh, so you know, it's uh, this. This will not change. Wh whatever happens, the um, the physical you know cable communication is actually uh, you know uh, uh, better and, and 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 faster. You know, in in, in all these ways. So it, it's going to be you know it, it doesn't really it doesn't really work. There are too many there's too many things that need to communicate between the yeah. base and the top of the unit. Understood. I think Roman must be a big fan of the uh, Gemini because he's asking about LED lights for indications of missed calls or messages. Any news there? There is, a, there is an LED that, note, that uh, signifies charging or uh, notifications, uh, it's a standard single LED. Lovely. So not, not as many as on the Gemini. And uh, final question about design and the physical appearance of, of Astro Slide. It comes from our book, and it's uh, looking at the final specs. The device is a little bit longer by uh, about eight millimeters. Um, is there a particular reason for that? Yes, there is. It's the 5G antennas. Okay, thank you. Moving on to Linux related questions, uh, if I may start by um, asking Logic Probe's question, which is, will Linux with FOSH be supported? So uh, probably not. Uh, we will uh, basically start by supporting um, uh, the Linux that we supported on the previous devices. So most likely it's gonna be, first of all, the uh, Linux Debian, usually in a KDE fashion. Uh, and LXCE, so that should be the main uh, the main version, the one that will uh, reach to the user uh, sooner than the other operating system. Okay, a couple of questions. Um, one from Alberto Gonzalez Palomo, which says, "Does the G fifty seven GPU in the MediaTek <laughs> Dimensity eight hundred work with Panfrost open source Linux drivers?" And F Pantiani nineteen ninety seven says. For Linux, will you use Bitfrost drivers? Can you add anything on, on, in terms of answering those questions? Yes, we have to wait and see uh, what we can do. But usually this is quite complicated because uh, as far as I know, uh, the GPU drivers come with uh, the user land, uh, um, user space uh, sort of driver and the uh, matching kernel space drivers. And usually uh, the kernel space drivers are not really provided to us. Uh, so they are not they are not provided to uh, to third party to ODNs basically. So this is usually not possible. But we will see if this is uh, uh, if, if if it will be any change for this for the Astro. Okay, lovely. Now, uh, Jeff, both Jeff Shaw and Dave Liao ask similar questions, which is, uh, will other operating systems will be uh, be available at launch or just Android? In other words, 
will the device come just shipped with Android um, or will Linux be there from uh, shipping? It will be shipped with Android only, uh, which is the uh, operating system that, the, uh, that Planet Computers really tailor to the device. And then it will be hopefully very closely um, followed with, uh, with a Linux release, uh, most likely Debian Linux and, uh, and most likely other distributions will follow. Lovely. Yeah, well, I covered this a little bit on the, um, on the, uh, on the first look event as well. Okay, people can look out for that as well. And uh, a question from Digby Christmas. Will the 5G UltraSave battery technology work with, uh, with Debian Linux? So we still have to confirm this. However, um, it, it likely, uh, it's most likely probable because that will be something that the uh, sort of Android kernel, the Linux Android kernel will take care of. And therefore, because the Linux kernel is gonna be exactly the same, uh, the same, uh, the same saving should be should be matched there. Okay, lovely. And then um, Megabyte asks about um, phone-based features like call and SM calling an SMS. I'm guessing that that won't be available at shipping, but you're hoping reasonably soon afterwards. Yes. So um, again, we we are trying to uh, basically follow the same model for all the devices. And for the Gemini, um, uh, we we had a few. Uh, let's say uh, a few functionality exposed into Linux. Uh, we grow that with the Cosmo, and so we hope with the Astro will be even faster in providing these functionalities and in calling SMS and so on on the Linux side. Lovely. And Skynet asks a similar question with, you know, with relation to USB ports, camera, NFC. So again, the 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 objective is to be there as soon after launch as possible. Yes, it's a it's. A, it, it's a work that we do together with the open source community and is also an iterative process. So we'll start with some uh, core dev uh, device drivers and then move on growing as much as possible. So uh, Jan, Volek and, and Chris, K-R-I-S, hi Chris, they both asked about Sailfish. Yeah, that's, that's also interesting. Um, basically the way it works is that there's a kind of, um, uh, a kind of middle layer uh, called Halium and once the uh, libraries are compatible to Halium, then it can be easy to port uh, the Linux functionality to other systems and Sailfish is one of those. So um, basically the, the way we work is that we always start with one system like Debian Linux, and then we will try to open. And if there is enough interest from the community that can follow uh, quite quickly once it runs stable in, in a single operating system. Lovely. Just, uh, just a, a couple more, I guess, similar um, questions, but we'll just finish off on the Linux front. Uh, Marco uh, Nuba asks about Ubuntu Touch. Yeah, this, this is, again, it's very similar. So once we have one system running, uh, that is when it's going to be easy to port it to a different, to a different <laughs> distribution. We are working on Ubuntu Touch currently on Cosmo. So we hope to uh, move all this um, knowledge that we are building into the next device. Lovely. Uh, Patrick Valencia asked the question about dual boot Linux, which you've already answered, but he also um, follows up with a supplementary question ar around, can you make the scatter file available for easy backups and restores like was the case with Gemini? Um, this requires a slightly a longer uh, response. And um, the reason is, so we enable um, flashing user scatter files uh, for the Gemini devices and then sort of worked well. But um, in current times, we noticed that um, it's not so easy to flash using, um, uh, using the scatter file. Basically, you need to have a really um, compatible computer. Not all computers are fine. Uh, not all um, Windows installation are fine. It's difficult to use other systems. So for the Cosmo, we actually created a different way to flash, uh, which is basically um, easier. So you just have to download the SD card, the Linux SD card, you uh, write it on SD card, you pop it into the Cosmo, and from the recovery mode, you can install Linux. So I guess we are planning to use the safe system for the Astro, which is uh, sort of also fail safe because it's m more difficult to break the device and uh, and hopefully be much uh, much more user friendly lovely and finally on linux colin w asks will it be possible to make the developers to make a developer's handbook for the chipsets available 
Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, developer handbooks are covered by a license uh, with the with the media tech, so we cannot okay. just release it to other people. Okay, lovely. The next section is on uh, questions around uh, the radio bands, and it will come as not a huge surprise, I think, to hear that the vast majority of these relate to Verizon Band 13. And I'd like to thank Brian A. Bell, um, contributor 4154, Jose uh, JX, and Merrick Press uh, for their questions in this area around uh, Verizon Band 13. Will it be, you know, it won't, it's not currently in the list of, of bands supported. Will it change? Will you still apply for Verizon certification in the US? I know that again, it's something that you raised in the initial Q&A, but is there anything to add? Um, so not really, we, we've, we've covered a pretty, I think that comp comprehensively in the, um, in, the, um, in the first look for the Astro slide in the event. Okay. So that's available uh, right now if you've not yet seen it. Um, and then there's a, a question from Takahiro Oshi, who says, why not support LTE band 28A stroke B like Cosmo Communicator? Uh, so again, we have to make some choices on the bands. And uh, I think 28 uh, is one of the bands that's not supported. But I think every other band on the, the, on the Cosmo is supported um on the uh on the astro and don't forget i presume this question is for japan mm -hmm. um and don't forget for 5g we're supporting band 77 78 and 79 on 5g and all the other bands on the 4g which are which were on the uh which are on, on the cosmo list so i think we're covering um japan pretty well finally chan fai wong uh, whose con contribution ID number 4122 asks about uh, will uh, I be able to use um, Astro Slide in Hong Kong? Is it global 5G or 4G network compatible? So hi there, uh, just a quick uh, uh, message on that. So basically 5G, um, I think the Hong Kong frequencies are uh, band N1, uh, which we are compatible with. So the answer is on 5G is yes, and on 4G is yes. So there you go. Lovely, thank you. So we've got two sections uh, left to cover off now, and they are software questions and questions that didn't fit into any of the other buckets. So we're going to start with the software questions, and we start with Roger, who asks whether uh, the Android version will be uh, w compatible with Android Enterprise so that uh, Astro Slide can be integrated into a management solution within his organization. So regarding Android Enterprise, we have to uh, look at the process. So I would say by launch time, probably not, uh, but it's something that uh, we are getting many requests. So we are uh, looking forward to see the process and to hopefully uh, getting it certified for Android Enterprise. Thank you, Davide. Uh, contribution ID 465 asks, will the device work with the Intune company portal and Microsoft mobile device management? Um, that's something that contribution ID 465 has struggled with a little bit with Cosmo Communicator. Yeah, I also don't know this. Uh, it's something that we have to try whenever the device is out. And uh, uh, it's, it's, again, a process that we have to, to double check. Because we cannot be sure now. Okay, thank you for the question, uh, ID465, and watch this space. We'll keep you updated. Andy uh, JPB asks about on-screen keyboards in closed or portrait mode and the seamless integration from one keyboard to the other um, so that as the device opens obviously you have a physical keyboard previous to that I'm guessing on in portrait mode with the keyboard closed you have a, a virtual keyboard does that do those integrate perfectly so there's so there's a couple of things here so one is you know, if you look at the Cosmo already on the last version, we've had a, a mode where if you rotate the screen portrait, it will already pop up or it, it will enable the on-screen keyboard. But that's certainly a, that's certainly the kind of behavior that we will have on the on the Astro. Uh, um, as well as that, we're adapting some of our applications that when you are in uh, editing mode, for example, notes or some of the other new applications that you'll see at the device launch, uh, if you if you go into the uh, if you suddenly close the device, 
then the on-screen keyboard might pop up automatically, even though you're 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 you were in the kind of editing box, etc. Okay, so yes, the answer is uh, this will be supported. So on-screen keyboard on portrait, no on-screen keyboard on uh, on um, when the device on landscape when the device is open. But of course, there will be a setting to mitigate that as well. Thank you. Uh, Colin W asked another question around um, the backup software as well that was announced as part of the fundraise. The intention is for that to be available at launch? So the intention is for that to be available at launch um, and also probably even pre-launch available on the Cosmo. So you can move your data if you have a Cosmo. Um, and uh, there was a video in the first look event um, which you're welcome to have a look at. Thank you very much. Now, three questions now related to updates, both security and firmware updates. Uh, Jens Carmen asks about security updates and how, how often and for how long. Uh, Anti-M asks about firmware updates and Bill Dengler asks about uh, Android updates going forward, perhaps into Android 12 or 13 or beyond. Uh, David, do you want to take that one? Yes, so uh, we agreed with the ODM to have uh, security updates uh, for four times basically a year. So every uh, three months we'll have a, uh, an update for the firmware, which will include security updates. And uh, regarding the um, Android versions, well, we will, um, we will provide Android version for uh, basically the, the we will support, sorry, I did it again. And regarding the Android versions, uh, we will support the device through the years. Uh, so we will provide different Android versions whenever uh, it's possible. Yeah, so just to add to that point, you know, on the Cosmo, um, we, are, um, we are probably going to skip Android 10 completely and then go to uh, Android 11. So uh, okay. for, for previous devices. That's, I mean, that, that will be welcome news to Dom Rodriguez, Jatinda, and Jonathan M, who are all asking about, um, you know, updates for um, Cosmo as well. So there's obviously news to come in that direction. Just to mention to, on the Jatinda question, Jatinda's question as well, um, there is currently a Cosmo update um, uh, undergoing certification with uh, December security updates. Okay, thank you. Drew uh, Mochak asks about um, Google Accessibility Suite, whether that will be pre-installed um, and, and available. So the Google Accessibility is a standard feature, and yes. Okay. Is, uh... Chris Paffenfuss asks a question around Astro support uh, for AR Core from Google. Davide, any, any thoughts on that? Uh, we, we don't know yet if it will be supported, uh, we will come back to you for these questions a bit closer to the launch date. Thank you. And Mishka asks about um, the option of a desktop mode in a similar fashion to the Samsung DeX. So definitely uh, not for Android. It could be for other operative system like uh, Ubuntu Touch, for example. Uh, this is something we are testing with the Cosmo at the moment. Uh, for the for the Android, usually no. We have a kind of um, you, you can attach the HDMI uh, through the HDMI dongle. You can attach um, a display, and it would be basically a mirror function. So you see the same video on the same display on the big screen. Also, there's the Miracast, you know, Chromecast technologies uh, without a cable that you can uh, mirror the screen on your on your TV or your monitor, your with a, with a Chromecast if, if you want. Okay, hopefully you didn't get too much of the dog barking in the background there, but um, Patrick Valencia asked a question about rooted Android because that's what he uses as his daily driver. Um, can that be a default option uh, rather than selecting it from the boot menu? Yes, we plan to uh, we plan to have a similar um, development and as with the Cosmo. Actually, we have um, last version of the boot menu will actually allows you to choose the next, the default action. So that will also be possible on the Cosmo uh, very soon, as soon as the next uh, update is out. 
So you will be able to select a default um, uh, operating system, in this case also a default rooted Android version. So yes, it will be possible also on the Astro. Lovely, thank you. That's good music to the ears of Patrick Valencia. Thank you, Patrick, for that question. Um, I know that we've touched on Android um, 11 for um, Cosmo. Uh, Nberry55 asked the same question as well. So thank you for that, Nberry55. Is there a, is there a, a time um, scale for that? So that will happen after the Astro. Okay. So first we'll have the Astro, uh, which is based on Android 11. And then because of that, we'll try to backport uh, the effort that we spend there to the Cosmo. Thank you. And uh, there's a, a question from uh, Siong Wu Jong, who says, is Astro Slide going to be able to be powerful enough to run Windows 10 ARM? Uh, this is not really a problem of power. It's a problem of uh, sort of license and compatibility. So usually I know that uh, Windows 10 ARM is um, available for Qualcomm devices. As far as I know, it's not really available for MediaTek devices, even though they use it behind the scene, they use the same ARM um, sort of processors. So it's not really a matter, of, a matter of power, it's a matter of license and availability. And, and the, the short response is no, uh, it's, not, it's not available for the MediaTek yeah. uh, processors. If Microsoft, and, if Microsoft and MediaTek, for example, wanted to sponsor a project on this then we would be very happy to look at it as an option uh, but you know we've we haven't seen apart from let's say enterprise use um it, it's um it's never been a great success running windows on very small devices Finally, on the software, John has asked about um, being able to reinstall all Astro-specific apps and services. He gives the example of Airmail, Agenda, etc. when a custom ROM is installed. Uh, at the moment, we don't have custom ROMs. Um, we had it for uh, the Gemini. Uh, we, had, uh, we had lineage version. Uh, but the answer is yes, if there will be custom ROMs, um, most of the apps we provide, uh, probably all of them, are available uh, on, the, uh, on the Android store, on the Play Store, so you will be able to uh, download them again. Thank you very much. Just, just to, sorry, Chris, can I just uh, interject on this one? Please. I think the, the question would also be maybe if it's not, if it's not using the Play Store. So uh, we can think about providing the app separately on a support site or something. In reality, they're already provided because if you search for them in, you know, APK for fun or all the other engines, yeah. you can find yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. Um, finally, we're moving on to some miscellaneous questions. These didn't naturally fit into any other bucket. So I hope um, you'll be able to run through these, uh, Yanko and Davide, for us. And the first question, which is asked uh, by three people in a slightly different way, JB3924, uh, thank you for the question. Also, Damian and uh, Chung Fai Wong, thank you all. You have all talked about there being the specification changing. Is there any intention or, or, or hope that there, there may be a, like a free case or a hub for someone or an accessory or the backup, uh, the Planet Backup package, uh, or any any plans to um, to reward your diehard fans who've been with you all the way. So uh, the backup package is certainly going to be there. That's for sure because we already have it in kind of a, a beta test, and it might be there. So definitely there. Uh, we we definitely you know increase the RAM, which we think is the biggest in terms of cost. That is the biggest uh, sort of upgrade there um we can think of some 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 other nice things if if they can come in some some fun things uh, to come alongside the device uh but um that's kind of that's kind of what we have it's really this this decision on the processor was really out of our hands thank you um a couple of people have asked questions around um 
the ability of uh, Astro Slide to um, be waterproof or protected from water. Thank you, Crystal Caldwell, for your uh, question. And also Dom Rodriguez. Uh, Dom asks, will it cope with light rain? Um, and um, Crystal says, is the device waterproof? So the device is not um, waterproof as in it has a waterproof rating. I would say that the device will handle better in the rain than the Cosmo because of when it's closed. But you know, given our keyboard structure and the way that the keyboard um, is composed, I, it's difficult to, to have it waterproof in, in that way. So uh, without significantly increasing thickness yet again. So um, the answer is no, it's not waterproof, but if it's, if it's closed, it will be better in the rain than the Cosmo. Thank you. Um, and Crystal also asks about um, a sort of tempered glass screen protector or some form of screen protector. Is there um, an intention to, on making one of those available? So we have, uh, so we have, uh, you know, just to say we've got Gorilla Glass now on the device, which we haven't had before. Okay, and that's also a, a, an upgrade. But as well as that, um, you know, we are planning a screen protector for the device uh, as an, as an add-on. Okay, thank you. Um, and then a, a question from Elliot Hochberg um, about repairs. Uh, so uh, Elliot recently had to replace the keyboard on a BlackBerry Key 2. Um, obviously, there's not repair. Uh, there's not repair facilities all around the world. So how easy or challenging will it be to get to a repair center? And how do you plan to deal with that? So we've done keyboard repairs for Gemini and for Cosmo for the last few years. Um, typically, a user will have to uh, send in the unit, and then we have to analyze what's wrong with it, whether it's uh, something to do with uh, the keyboard uh, tray or it's to do with some specific keys. And then uh, the appropriate uh, elements are replaced. Um, you know, we're, it's really something, and, and the spare parts need to be there. So typically, we're doing that centralized in London at the moment. Um, you know, if there is a, um, then the, 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 the logic, the most logical second uh, location for this would be in Tokyo. Um, um, and typically, that's what happens. Devices are sent in and 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 and, and sent back, uh, given given what the situation is, repair under warranty or or it's been a damage, customer damage, et cetera. So um, that's the situation at the moment. As I said, the second location that we will be looking at is uh, Tokyo or somewhere in Japan. Thanks very much for that. Um, interesting question from uh, Dave Liao, uh, which is, is your team working in the same office or remotely or a combination? I think you can see, Dave, that the team is is not all working in the same office today, but uh, can you talk about perhaps, perhaps it would be more interesting for Dave to find out typically how you guys work together. So I think, you know, it's, it's difficult. Uh, different people in the team had to self-isolate for different periods in, 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 in this time. You know, the, the whole thing has been um, reasonably, reasonably challenging because at the, at the beginning of 2020, our China ODM uh, uh, was basically locked down um, people were actually uh, in China were not allowed to leave their villages, which they went to, or their towns, which they went to at, during the uh, during the the Chinese New Year break, and then things kind of resumed only you know a month later or even longer, right? So uh, and then when when they came back, essentially uh, we got locked uh, locked in in uh, in uh, in London. We had the lockdown at the beginning of April. And then, and then intermittently on different levels of uh, different tiers of uh, um, of, of uh, COVID alert, and again facing lockdown right now. So basically, um, there's limited stuff in the office, but we are working um, we are working remotely, and you know working remotely on software is easy. Uh, working remotely on hardware is quite hard. And uh, working, you know, remotely on repairs where the unit that you need to repair is, uh, is somewhere else is impossible. So, you know, there are different, there are different uh, tasks. But um, having said that, you know, things, things have kind of reasonably seen quite okay. I think the most challenging was probably mechanical engineering. Um, 
you know, doing mechanical engineering remotely with the, with the team in, in, in China. Um, and of course, sometimes it's much easier to resolve issues where in, when you're in the same room, any issue, and just getting a sort of general mindset which is shared is easier if we're in one place. Um, but uh, life is slightly different this year or last year in the last year. So uh, we hope it should come back to normality. In fact, you know, most tasks are uh, taking lo a little bit longer. If it's the courier guy that sends a sample of some uh, module or material or something, they just pick it up a day later. They deliver it yet another day later. So everything just taking, you just see a kind of general creep but uh, you know we've managed to get to the sample stage with, I would say, minimal delays. So we're pretty happy. Thank you for that question. Great stuff. We've just got uh, three questions left now, um, and it's a very specific one here from Ablis, um, who says uh, they love the Gemini Cosmo keyboard. Just two very minor gripes. The first of which is three key rollover causes ghosting and secondly the position of the v key in the dvorak language layout um and the, the suggestion is get rid of right shift key and move the arrows on one line next to the space bar any chance of seeing these improvements in astro so about the first one uh, will probably be a very similar behavior because the matrix will be most likely based on the cosmo model which is based on the gemini so there is not much we can do about that. Uh, although we will confirm this again later on, we will have the, the, final, uh, the final prototype. And about the position of the V key, this is instead something we can definitely uh, look at. Uh, okay. Yeah. So maybe if, if you get in touch, uh, Ablis, if you get in touch to, with us on hello at planetcom.co.uk uh, and just give us your suggestion, maybe for the Dvorak, uh, maybe we can we can look at that because the keyboards are not yet lasered, so um, that will happen, you know, uh, during production. Um, in in uh, let's say something around, uh, let's say May time or so. Lovely, uh, Ivan Fasciani asks, when will it be possible to choose the uh, Italian language? I'm assuming at some point you will ask people to choose which um, language layout keyboard that they wish to uh, choose and is there any plans as to when that will be so uh, that will be probably around mid-march when we will start asking those questions that that needs to be for the um essentially that only goes into the so if you imagine the keyboards are actually produced and then they are lasered uh, right at the end um, of the process of the keyboard the manufacturing process uh, lasered with the correct um, uh, language layout so that happens very close to um, assembly and production and, and shipping. Okay, thank you. And, and one final question is from Usman Sheikh. And uh, it's a very simple question around um, the initial shipping. Will everybody who has backed the project, should they effectively if expect at this stage that in July 2021, they will receive their Astro slide? So we expect to start shipping actually in June, uh, and then um, the the uh, we believe that most of the units should get out uh, by the end of July. Um, yes, I think I think uh, that should be possible. Okay, super. Um, well, uh, the response to uh, the request for questions has been absolutely incredible, phenomenal. Gents, in the space of just over an hour there, you've um, batted your way through more than 100 questions, for which I'm extremely grateful. Um, I think, you know, we, we probably, the, the, I guess the last question would be, can we do this again, perhaps in a month's time when, when there's more to say? Yeah, I think that would be great. Davide? Absolutely. Brilliant. Well, uh, thank you uh, to all the backers for you, for your questions and uh, and for driving a very stimulating um, discussion today. Uh, I hope that this is useful to you. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to get in touch via Facebook or via Twitter or via hello at planetcom.co.uk. I hope this has been a comprehensive uh, opportunity to answer 
questions, some very generic, some very specific, some that have just come from one person and some that have come from many. Davide and Yanko, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Very much appreciated. But most of all, thank you to all the backers who raised questions and are watching this. We'll sign off. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.